I'm here with Lynn Suprock, and Lynn, I love the pots that you've brought. They're absolutely amazing. I know, just take ordinary little pots and then create something special, something sentimental, something textual. Uh, this is a, a project that I use modeling clay okay. because you can see it is so textu textural, if that's a word, textural. I think um, it is. So we could do texture on this modeling clay. We can also do paint before Let's or after. Do it then. We can do some transferring of images. So as I said, we have a little pot here and I worked ahead on this one and I'm going to finish it off by mixing the two parts of this so one of the reasons, obviously, that you want to use a modeling clay as opposed to like a paper clay or something like that is because if this is going outside, you want it to be waterproof. You want exactly. it to be something that can also stand up to dirt and soil because exactly. I assume these pots are completely usable. You're you, not ruining your pot. You don't have to color, co coat, excuse me, or cover them with anything and um, they're completely waterproof and weatherproof. So they're, they're perfect for outside or inside on your kitchen counter. So I have... Uh, two pieces of this clay and I'm going to put my gloves on because it's a little sticky when you so start to So I was going to say move. you're using about equal size pieces. Right, and, and I scoop them out so that each scoop is um, used with part A or part B. But you, you don't have to like them. weigh measure it or anything. No, because it's not, it's a little more forgiving. You don't have to have it ounce for ounce or milliliter per milliliter or gram per gram. So you have about the same size uh, balls. And then you're going to put those together and then you're just going to, I start out by squishing them together and then I start to roll them. And then they'll mix them so that that the colors, the light and the dark, will blend together. And then what you have is one um, color that's just one, like all light gray, and that's when you know that it's ready to use. But Doesn't of course you could turn it into it. any other color later with paint. You can actually paint on top of it, right, or you can paint underneath it if you wanted to have that color of the clay stand out. So once you have it all put together and mm -hmm. it's all solid in color it's ready to go it's going to be activated you kind of flatten it out like a pancake and i think we've done this before mm -hmm. you know with the modeling clay it's about a quarter's worth of a depth of thickness and you're just going to take part of that and apply it do you it. always work in small pieces um, I like to work in small pieces because I find it's easier to maneuver and to push. And with this, you can actually seam it together just by pressing it. You don't have to actually do anything with glue or I was going to say, or even usually traditional clay, what I'm used to doing is you have to use slip and you have to use like a right. little toothbrushy no, thing. No, you don't have, you have to, to do like that. blend it. This is totally self-blending. Self you don't have to do any of that. So. I like it when things are less work. That's my kind of style. <laughs> I like I like this clay a lot too because it's, it is really easy to use. So that's one of my things. It's easier, it's better. I okay. also think just handmade things that you've really gotten your hands into and your fingerprints and, and whatever yes. else well, are good. kind of a nice thing. That's a good thing. point. So I'm going to take these gloves off now, which you have a lot of print in. But that's okay. This is textural. So what I want to do now is grab my texture, which okay. this kind of looks like a, a honeycomb. And I'm going to just press into that clay. And look how that texture just comes right out. That is very cool. So you could okay. use any rubber stamp, a trivet, you can use a, you anything that had that texture right, that you Right, and I'm gonna, I need a little bit more of a space, so I'm gonna come mm -hmm. back and take some of that texture out, because my next step is going to be apply the transfer. As you see on this oh. one, there's a transferred image, and this exciting part of this is it becomes waterproof, permanent, uh, and it's inkjet. So, Whoa, because things that are inkjet are almost should, never permanent. I'm trying not to touch this because it is wet. This is freezer paper that's mm -hmm. been printed on. And if you don't... Do you have uh, to fiddle with the settings on your printer at all to print on freezer paper? It depends paper? on your printer. Okay. Um, I put mine on high quality print and mm -hmm. it puts out a lot of ink. And then this is also an inkjet transparency, which is a little easier to handle. It doesn't wipe when you, you know, touch it. You won't wipe the ink off. It's easy. But some people, you know, don't have that or you don't have that access to that. So you just use the freezer paper. And you just come along with that. Can I hold wet the pot side? for you? Will that make it a little sure. easier? Wet side there up. There you go. So the wet side is up. And obviously, if you had text, you'd want to reverse it. Right. right. If you want to, yes. And there's a, there's a sample of that over there, too. There's a pot with text. Um, so I'm going to leave this. I'm going to burnish this. And you can use your finger or a big tongue blade or a credit card just to get that firmly on the clay. Saying, you could even use the back of the ice cream scoop, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, you can use the back of the ice cream scoop. Now and you're what, doing this before the clay dries? Yes, it's okay. going to be wet. And then you let it sit for your 24-hour period. Oh, for period. 24 hours mm -hmm. you let it sit. Yeah, okay. and once it sets for 24 hours, I have another one right here. Mm -hmm. You're ready to do the unveiling. <laughs> I'll let okay. you do it. Okay. Do, I, do I just mm -hmm. peel? Just peel off and let's see what, 
what's underneath. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I'm scared. Is it like a band-aid? Should I go fast? Or is this or is this sort of peaky anyway. eaky method? Okay. O M G it's Amazing, permanent, and you know it's really cool. I just, I just love that. So you print it on a pot. <laughs> print it on a pot, and like I said, you can use freezer paper, which is easy mm -hmm. to get and it's less expensive, or you can use the inkjet transfer. And I have a few other things. It's, that's the flat surface. See how okay. nice that was. I took some texture on this pot, made these little flowers, and we have the same type of mandela oh, wow. that that's will be so cool right on the inside of those flowers that's really really neat and i can't believe how black that ink still is it's absolutely beautiful so if we want to color that honeycomb pot what's the next step okay this one was pre-colored in mm -hmm. the in the clay on top this one we have the clay and we're going to color it I'm just a little acrylic and I water mine down because I'm not using a canvas so I'm going to do the black first because that's going to get down into all that honeycomb. So that's such a good technique. If you want it to have that aged look, because I can see, right. for instance, from the like sort of verdigris pots that you brought with you, that that aged look, part of it is making sure that the crevices look like they are sort of dark, you know, right. and that they've gone through a lot. Right, that they've been out in the weather or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so then you would wipe it back off to whatever level you wanted. You can add a little bit of water if you want to, whoops, mm -hmm. if you want to get some more of that off. But then after that dries mm -hmm. and you've got your recesses darkened, then you just pick up your general brush. I like using chip brush. It's not really. I was going to say, chip brushes are so inexpensive at the hardware store. You can buy a dozen for, you know, like less than $10. And I mix, yes, and I have a box of them. So I mix, <laughs> mix my paint, mm -hmm. a little bit of gold there, and then I just come back over and then I brush over that black. That, and if I want to go over my B, mm -hmm. I can. And it'll still be there when I wipe it because it's permanent. And so. you're not obliterating the white at all. You're sort of painting in a patchy way, which is one of the things that a chip brush is good for. It's really, really, really good, to, you know, to get in all those crevices too on top of your blackened area. So this is a, a stepped up version, a quick version mm -hmm. of what I did, but this is how it ends up. Well, and you can work the paint. Let's look at some of the finished ones that you brought. The one with the sort of faux china on it, that's absolutely gorgeous. It's I the same love process. All those. It's exactly, you know, you just take your print of your um, chins and you just put it right on the pot. You are a super clever girl. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This was fantastic. I love it.